is understanding what's happening around you and what happened before that lead into what's happening now. And we think we have a name for it's called it's called history. H H I S T O R Y. And I learned that it was his story it means God's story. History. And history is important because you got a situation wherever you are, we have two things that are important. One is time and the other is place. So we have different times and different places. And so when you're reading history or watching movies or TV programs, etc., about some period in history, you find out what life was like at some particular time and place. And so history has been there for a long time. Now we have something that before history is called prehistory, which P R E, prehistory. And that basically means there's no record. There's no record, just people get up and they don't have any written record. Now, the main point of history is you have in Western culture, you have what something is called the written record, which means you have things that are written down in papers and eventually in books. And then they have stories and stuff like that, like a story. You have all these stories before you had books and that. And every group of people and even every individual has history. So a person's individual history is called usually individual or personal history. And then you have what you call society history. And then you have country history and you have world history. And then world history, for example, is talking about the whole, the world. So you have basically prehistory and then you have history and then it goes into basically early history and you divide it into different periods. And you have historians that basically that are professional people like scholars and professors and other people that study it and they learn about it and then they write books and give speeches and stuff about history. So the whole point is if you get lost somewhere, just making it very simply, if you get lost somewhere, you wake up in the morning somewhere and you're alone and you don't remember where you are or why you're there or how you're going to get out of there, you got a huge problem. For example, you're out on a desert there and you wake up and you look around and it's all desert or else you're on a boat somewhere on the water and you don't even remember how you got on the boat, but you're in the boat. So where are you? So two questions then. One is, where are you? And then the other question is, well, another, you get two questions. Why did you get here? How did you get here? That's one. And then the second question is, how do you get out of here? How do you escape? And I find it personally kind of interesting and also kind of stupid. A lot of people, they don't know where they are. If you drop them somewhere, they have no idea where they are. They don't know how they got there. They don't know where they are and they don't know where they're going and they don't know how to get out. And if you can't figure it out, you die. That's D-I-E, which means you cease to live. And so history is one of the most important subjects you have. So how did I get here? And how did I get here? And then how am I going to get out of here? How, well, how am I going to get out of here is much more important than how I got here. But you got to understand all that. So it's all in the history. So growing up in Michigan, in the United States, I was interested in. You had a company there at that time. There means in the U.S. And for basically about middle school kids, well, it was actually upper elementary school, primary school. It was called elementary school at that time, not primary school. The upper elementary, about grade somewhere around about five and six, they had books and they sold books and I read a lot of books. The company's name was Landmark. And it was Landmark series of books and they had basically books and it was written at a local level. 
And when I say local level, it was at a level, age level. And I got really interested in it and then up a grade of primary school and then later in middle school and even in, univer in uh, high school. So I read all this stuff because I was interested in the people I was reading about because they had a series of, they had a lot of books, but they had a series of books on important people in the world. Very important people. We call them VIP. Very important person. And so I was reading all that stuff. Now, we had some history classes in the school, but I did a lot of extra reading. We had something called a library. And when I first was young, I lived in a small village out in the countryside, outside of a large city where my father worked. He could drive from a small village, which was near where he grew up. He grew up on a rural farm a short distance away. I could ride my bicycle there. And so my father used to have to give me, get me books from the public library in, in a large city. The city was roughly about 150,000 people. And it was the number two city in the state of Michigan. If you look at a map somewhere about the United States, you see divisions of the United States and the division on the East Coast and South and Midwest and West and Southwest and then Far West. Well, Michigan was a little peninsula. It was a peninsula, actually divided in two parts, peninsula. It was on the border with Canada. Yeah, it's easy to find. But the whole point was that he was living in the area where he grew up. He, he grew up on a farm. They had a 90-acre dairy farm, and then they had second thing. They grew some vegetables in the ground, like carrots and some other ones, tomatoes, I forget all the kinds. It was a 90-acre farm, which was actually a good-sized farm at that time. 90 acres. Acres of division of measurement. And so up the hill from the farm is they had a small village. And he lived there with, his, with our family. But then he had to drive into the city. And it was about a 20-minute drive by automobile. And so the important point which I'm reading into, the, the work day at that time was 8, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m., five days a week. And at the beginning, you also worked Saturday morning. So you had five and a half days. And then later they cut, they cut the work, day, work days down to five days and Saturday became a free day and became weekend, Saturday and Sunday. So my father used to get me books when I was living in the village. And there was no place for me to get books. My mother had to take me inside by bus downtown to, to meet my father when he got off work. And she'd take me to the library and I'd check out some books from the library. Well, they eventually, my father and mother moved to a new house in the village. And so then in the village, it was, I, my father would still bring me the books. So after work finished it, 8 would be 5 p.m. At 5 p.m., he'd go to the city library and get me some books. I'd tell him what I liked, and he generally got me history books because they knew I liked history. So I was there for several years, and then eventually moved into a small suburban area, a city. This was a city now. The other was a village. And the city was about 5,000 people. And he had to work... He had to work still, and then eventually, well, when he was working Saturday morning, my mother would take me in off on Saturday afternoon, around noon. He finished, and then we'd meet my father, and we'd go out to lunch in the city. But then they canceled, in the United States now, they canceled Saturday morning work. And so we moved eventually to a small, called suburb, suburb, suburb means a small area. Uh, more like a small city. And then, and I loved it when we moved it because in that small city of about 5,000 people, there was a building and it was a former place for the fire department. And then the fire department moved to a bigger place. And then the small building became a library. 
So in the United States, what you had is you had generally a city and you had the library, sometimes branches in different parts of the city, but they had branches in other parts. So then you no longer had to go in to the big branch downtown because you, the move, and you had what you called a county le, level. County is an organization of a, a group of ag areas and stuff like that, farms and people. So eventually he moved to Granville, which was the 5,000 population. And I loved it because then I could walk to the small library in the old fire, in the old uh, firehouse, which was quite small. And they had, because they were part of the county library system, county library system, I could select my own books. And for several years after that, on Saturday, well, my brother, at that time, I have an older brother that was two and a half years older than me. So at that time, there were limited jobs for young kids. So the girls basically were babysitting, taking care of children when the parents weren't there. And that was it. All the woman, all the girls could do would be babysit. But for the guys, they had a couple things. But the main thing they had was the newspaper. So you had the large city. And that's where the newspaper was printed. And then they were brought out to the surrounding areas outside the city. And, and then you had young kids. And at the beginning, it was only guys, only boys. No girls were allowed to do it. So you would get a job delivering newspapers. Now, in order to, be get, to become a delivery boy, you had to be 12 years old, age 12. So in... In the upper level, you were under 12. So my brother was two years older than me. And we lived in the village first, a small village. We lived in the center of the village, center of the village. And we had anywhere from about 55 to about 70 customers. And we were in the center of the city. So my brother got the, he got the job when he was 12. And I was, I would have been just under not, about nine years old at the time. So my brother and father and mother and brother were pretty smart. I wanted to have, make some money too, so they split it. So my father would go north from our house, which is right in the center of it. And it was actually not just in a small village, it was out in farmland too. We had bicycles and stuff like that. So we split it. So I started getting money when I was age nine years old age nine, because I had half half of the thing because my father would go one way, not my father, my brother would go one way and I'd go the other way. And then you had a bicycle during the summer and you had a bag of the newspapers. And I hated Wednesday the most because you had uh, six days a week and then later they went to Sundays. And Sunday was a special edition, so you had normally six days a week. Monday through Saturday. So the problem was, in the week, Monday and Tuesday, the papers were not very heavy. And you had a bag, that, a big bag for the newspapers around your neck, and it would hang down where your hands were. And then you could use a bicycle during three, three seasons. But in winter, it was, you had so much snow, you had to walk. And you had, sometimes you had two bags, one on each side of your, one on each shoulder, and it was across your body. And I hated Wednesday, because this is business now. Business basically meant that you had all these stores had ad advertisements in the newspaper about sales and that. This was usually Wednesday and Thursday. And then the sales would be generally on Saturday well, sometimes Friday night, but generally Saturday and Sunday. And so the papers were very thick. And then in the winter, you could not ride your bicycle because you had snow and ice. So I hated, I hated basically winters on, on, uh, and during the week because the newspapers were so high, so heavy. So I remember there was one lady, and we had about split roughly. I had about, about 55, and he had... No, about, actually it would be about 40. I had about 40 and he had about 40. 
because he had a longer distance to go with than me. So he was older. So I had to trudge in the winter with the papers and it was cold, really cold. And I could not use my bicycle in the winter because snow on the ground and ice. And I had to walk with two heavy bags. And I would walk and deliver papers and they had one nice old lady and she would she was sort of shocked that my parents made me work because I was, you know, I wasn't even 12 years old at that time. So I would go and she was about halfway through my route. Route means my delivery section. And so she would invite me into her house and I would sit by her fireplace or heater and I'd get warm for maybe 30 minutes. And then I would do this. Now I did this after school. School finished about 3 o'clock, 3.30, and then we had the bus, we had a school bus at that time. We had a school bus drop me off, and I started delivering papers about 4 p.m. And the workday, as I said, for people that were working finished at 5 p.m. So she would invite me in, and I'd sit there for maybe 30 minutes or 40 minutes, depending on how cold it was, and she'd warm me up. Now, this is what well, I thought was really funny. I was a young kid now. I started when I was nine years old. And she she couldn't understand why my father and mother made me deliver papers when I was only nine or ten years old, starting out. And she was a little bit shocked. She was a widow. Her husband had died and she was living alone. Her children were living separately and she was all by herself. But she found it so shocking that here's a nine or ten year old kid having to go out in the winter with heavy, heavy, heavy newspapers on usually third, it was Wednesday and Thursday and walk because I couldn't use the bicycle. So she heat me up and I sit there and then I go back. Now the reason I mention that is my parents grew up in something called the Great Depression. My father was born in 1912. My mother was born in 1917. My brother was born in 1941, and I was born in 1944. Now, if you study anything about history, you know there was World War I going on from 1914 to 1918, and there was World War II, and that's what they were called. World War II from 19, for Americans, it was 1941 to 1945. And the Americans went into World War I later because it was the world was in World One was in Europe and the Americans went in in nineteen seventeen and they fought in Europe against the Germans and then they fought again later after nineteen thirty nine because World War Two started in nineteen thirty nine in Poland. Now I knew all that stuff because I had read all that stuff. And so this woman, she couldn't believe, you know, my parents forced me to go out in the very, very cold weather with two bags, particularly on uh, Wednesday and Thursday and trudge through the snow and ice. And it was cold. But she was a nice old lady, but I understood it. And I did it for a reason. My parents grew up in something called the Great Depression. So if you read American history or world history, you read about something that started in 1929 in the world, started in the United States in 1929 called the Great Depression. And it lasted for over 10 years. And the U.S. didn't start coming out of the Great Depression, which started in 1929, until basically 1941. And because in 1941, that's when the Japanese bombed Pearl Harbor, the Navy base in what is now Hawaii, in Honolulu, which is the capital city. And so I knew all that stuff. And so the Great Depression was there. So my parents grew up in the Great Depression. And my mother had all these stories. And the one story I never, ever forgot, I'm very old now, I never forgot, she was talking about in the Great Depression, she lost a dime. That means 10 cents. A dollar is 100 cents. And they were going out and they were looking for the dime. Now you might say, a dime is nothing. Well, at that time, 
everything was much cheaper. A dime was a lot of money because you did not have a lot of money. A dime, 10 cents was a lot of money because all the stuff you bought was very cheap because a lot of people didn't have a lot of money. And so my parents had decided that my brother got the job of being a, it's called newspaper delivery boy. Short firm was newspaper boy. And so he got it at 12 and then he gave me half of it. So I made some money. Now the interesting point there is I had some money, not much money, but a little bit of money. So my father and mother wanted me to learn how to manage my money. So you had banks, you know what banks are. That's where people put their money in. They also borrow money from the banks. So my father opened a bank account for me, which was in the, in the city, because he didn't work too far from the main bank. So he, gave, he put $25 I was, nine, I was nine years old. So he put $25 into my own personal bank account. It was my bank account. Not my father's bank account. My bank account. It was under my name. And then he had secondary things. If something happened to me, he could take care of it. But it was my bank account. So he gave me 20. He gave me. This is the key word. He gave me $25. Because I was just starting out. I had no job. I had no way to make money. So I got the newspaper delivery. He gave me $25 to open my own personal bank account. Now, Young Sook, this is about time to stop. It's 25.